I'm Jan. I'm Tracy, and we are in Istanbul, Turkey. We have just landed in the Istanbul airport, At Atatürk airport? Atatürk. Atatürk airport, which is the largest airport in the world. Yesterday we left London and we are here now in Istanbul. And the reason that we're in Istanbul is this is the first time we'll be going on a Viking ocean cruise, the Viking Sky. But that's not until tomorrow. Today, we're gonna to go into the old town of Istanbul. Fortunately, we're at the Doubletree Old Town, so it's literally only just steps away from where we're gonna go. So, let's go. Now, we have both been to Istanbul a few times. Uh, this is probably my favorite city in the world. This is where East meets West. It is just an amazing place. It has been around since 5500 BC, and it was first named Constantinople after Emperor Constantine in 324. Now, just six years after Constantine would actually name this Constantinople, once again, the Roman Empire was split. The first time was during Diocletian, then it came back together. Now, Constantine splits the Roman Empire into the Western Roman Empire, which we think of of as Rome, the Roman Empire today, and the Eastern Roman Empire, which is the Byzantine Empire. And one of the many remainders of the Eastern Roman Empire that was called the Byzantine Empire is this, the Forum of Theodosius. It was probably one of the largest squares in the city and was probably called the Forum of the Bull. Now, the Byzantine Empire would last for 1,100 years. That's actually longer than the Roman Empire that we think of uh, would last. But that would end in 1453 when Ottoman forces, led by Sultan Mehmed II, would storm the walls of Constant Constantinople and take the city. Which brings us to the Bayezid Mosque, which is behind me. The Bayezid Mosque was completed in 1505, and it was built after the Ottomans had come into the city. This was one of the few uh, mosques that was built as its own imperial mosque, because when the Ottomans did come in, they had converted all the Christian churches into mosques. So not only is this one of the oldest mosques in the city, the first imperial mosque was destroyed by an earthquake. So what is standing behind me is the oldest of the imperial mosques in Constantinople, Istanbul. Steps away from the Bayezid Mosque is the Karpala Chasi, which is a grand bazaar. In 1453, when the conquest of the Ottomans came through, the Sultan wanted to boost economic activity, so he made the grand bazaar the center of the economic activity in 1456. Now today, the Grand Bazaar is one of the largest uh, and oldest of the covered uh, markets in the world. Uh, it's just amazing. Over 4,000 shops and 61 covered streets, covering it in an area of 330,000 square feet. Every day, anywhere between 250,000 to 400,000 visitors come here, and today, for two of those. This is the Column of Constantine. Built nearly 1,700 years ago, this column was completed in 328 AD to commemorate Emperor Constantine's dedication to Constantinople. Behind me is the Stone of Milion, and this was erected in the 4th century in Constantinople. This is exactly what Milion means in Greek. It means milestone, and that's exactly what this spot was used for. It was mile marker zero to all roads in the Byzantine Empire, and it served in this function for over a thousand years. And it wasn't until 1884, during an international convention, that the zero meridian was moved from the this, this zero Milion over to Greenwich, England.
right, so we are right here. We are in the middle of what is known as the Basilica Cisterns. This was built uh, around 200, 300 AD by the Romans when they were here in, uh, in that time of Constantinople. A cistern is essentially is a waterproof structure that had an aqueduct that fed water to it for the city. There was almost a thousand different cisterns underneath the city. This is the largest. At one point, it actually, when it was full with water, would have 21 million gallons of water. But what's very cool is the 336 columns we would find here. And what Jan forgot to mention, this is my favorite place in all of Istanbul. This is one of the top attractions if you come here. This and the Hagia Sophia. Uh, it's worth it. There was a long line, but we took a, an expedited tour. We paid a little bit extra for a private guide. We got to walk right to the front of the line, and the ticket entrance was 450 Turkish Lira. This is my favorite uh, place ever. 527 Justinian had this built. Uh, at the time it was built, it was the largest church in the world until 1520 when the Cathedral of Seville was. Not only that is the dome, just beautiful dome, uh, goes 181 feet. Uh, today, it still is the fourth largest dome in the world. And until St. Peter's Basilica, it was the tallest dome in the world. That's almost a thousand years. However, in 1453, when you had the Ottomans come in, the very first place that the Sultan came to was here. He then had his Ulma, which is his Islamic scholar, pro proclaim the Shahada, which is, there is no God but Allah, and Muhammad is his messenger. That is the declaration of faith. From that point in time, it became a mosque. At least it was a mosque until about 1930 when Kemal Ataturk called, uh, made it into a museum. Recently in 2020, the president of Erdogan has reverted it back to a mosque, but it is still absolutely beautiful. All right, so we're in the courtyard of the Sultan Ahmad a Mosque, also known as the Blue Mosque. Uh, in 1606, uh, the Ottomans had to go into a treaty with the Habsburgs to uh, sign a treaty that has effectively stopped their march into the northern portion of Europe. Now, because of this, the Sultan said that we need to have a mosque in order to get good favor from Allah or from God and had this mosque created. Now, why it's called uh, the Blue Mosque is there is 22,000 tiles inside that gives it uh, kind of a bluish hue. Just, it's absolutely beautiful. Plus, it's, it's actually fairly light in there because there's 250 uh, windows uh, that actually gives you a light.
Another interesting thing is, is you look, there's actually six minarets. And this is kind of a scandal when it was built because at the time, the only mosque that had six uh, minarets was the, uh, the Grand Mosque in Mecca. In order to solve that, this Sultan just sent a seven minaret to Mecca. Now there's actually, I think, six different mosques within Turkey that actually have six minarets. All right, so we're at the Hippodrome. Uh, the Hippodrome essentially was the center for sports, entertainment, political rallies, and people coming here during this time, uh, during the time during the, Byzan uh, the Byzantine Empire. Uh, the, really, the biggest thing here is uh, around the sides. The stands aren't here anymore, but there used to be stands that you could have as many as 100,000 people. Now, to put that in perspective, Circus Maximus in Rome could have 300,000 people. So this is about the third of the size of Circus Maximus, but still, it was one of the largest Hippodromes in uh, the Roman empires. Now there is three major uh, columns here. There is the first column that goes back 3,500 years uh, uh, from Egypt that was brought here, but it's too big to be able to get here. So they actually cut it to about 20 meters off of it uh, to be able to get here. It was moved here around 300, 400 uh, AD. Uh, in the middle, there is a known as the serpent column. It's bronze. It used to have three heads, but it just has two now. And then you have the column that was uh, from Constantinople team that date stacked about 400 AD. We've had such a great time here in Istanbul. Uh, we're just a, a remarkable city. Next, uh, tomorrow we go on to the Viking sky. Uh, and to tell you what, going to watch this video to continue on with our adventures. And as always, keep on traveling. Where do we go?